Many people in rehabilitation face a common problem. Since they're trying to get over addictions to alcohol and drugs, up to 50% often turn to opiates. Here to tell us what opiates are and why they're used as a crutch is Dr. Bradley Wasta with Asano Incorporated. Good morning to you once again, Dr. Wasta. Happy Good Friday. Okay, when you say opiates, what types of drugs are you referring to? Well, people uh, usually think of opiates as uh, pain medication, mm -hmm. Vicodin, um, oxycodone, um, Norco, but it's also things like methadone, heroin, and even Ultram. How is that? Pardon? How does that, how is one, how can opiates, is it just different types of opiates? Yeah, they're just okay, different Okay, types. got it, okay. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that, well obviously a lot of people are abusing these types of, of, of drugs? Well, uh, true, some start as uh, uh, recreational abuse, mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes it starts after a surgery and you start taking uh, pain medication, narcotic pain medication, which is an opiate. Mm -hmm and you need more and more and soon the pain is gone but you're stuck with the addiction. So is it that people like the way it feels or that it is really an addictive, addictive drug? Both. Okay. Opiates create euphoria okay. but they also create a very real addiction and um, with real withdrawal symptoms and really that's sort of the what was behind the topic for today because generally I talk about conditions, mm -hmm. whether it's depression or anxiety, but today I wanted to point out two specific medications that a lot of people don't know about because they really ease the pain involved mm -hmm. in breaking an opiate addiction. Mm -hmm. So they can be used both ways. I mean, obviously they're good, but if you uh, abuse them or become addicted to them, what are some of the consequences, especially when it comes to um, some of the fears and withdrawal? Uh, oh uh, gosh, yeah, withdrawals can make people feel like they're dying, although opiate withdrawal is not like threatening. Mm -hmm. um, but we're talking nausea, uh, muscle pain, bone pain, uh, bowel changes, um, high blood pressure, high heart rate, sweating, insomnia, anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are several symptoms and, and these people get quite miserable. And oftentimes, it's mm -hmm. the fear of that withdrawal that keeps them using rather than seeking help. And in fact, I, I know on, on, we may have shown it on the screen already that uh, statistics are showing about 50% of people that are in recovery programs are still using opiates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, drug and alcohol addiction, it, it is a chronic relapsing condition. And depending on how you define relapse and how long you monitor your patient, um, gosh, it, you know, relapse occurs uh, from 40 to 90 percent of the time in treatment. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about treatments a little bit. Are there treatments available? Oh my gosh, yeah. The, the, the two I wanted to talk about today, one, the uh, trade name is Suboxone, the generic name is Buprenorphine, and the other one is uh, Vivitrol, the generic name being naltrexone. Mm -hmm. Now naltrexone, um, it comes as a pill, but the Vivitrol specifically is a long-acting injectable where people can take this injection mm -hmm. and it will last for the month. And what it effectively does is it blocks the receptor that would normally attach to the opiate. So once you have this medication in your system, naltrexone in your system, then if you try taking an opiate, it will have no effect. It has nowhere to attach. How come we've never heard of this before? And, and if, if people are addicted to opiates, this seems like a simple solution. One shot and you're good to go for at least a month. Well, one of the problems with the, with the naltrexone is because it's simply a blocker. So here, here's if you had a receptor and the opiates would bind into the receptor. Now trixin sits out here and blocks it so they can't bind. The problem being if there's nothing binding that, you go through withdrawal. So now trixin is something you use after withdrawal. Okay. Uh, but once you're through withdrawal, it will block. And by blocking that, no, not only will you not be able to use an opiate or experience the effects of it, it will also cut down on cravings because it's when that opiate receptor is occupied with a medication 
that causes a release of dopamine in your system, which causes cravings and is believed to be responsible for the addictive process. Well, for more information um, on this, this treatment that is out there, call Dr. Bradley Wajda at 384-0800. That is area code 209 because that's in the North Valley. Or here on, uh, on Herndon Avenue in Fresno, 999-9514. One four. I know that we could go on and on about this well, yeah, because this because the well the only other thing I was going to say was the Suboxone one is one you can take without having to go through withdrawal. Wow, wow, that seems yeah. like a great treatment, and I hope people yeah. um, call to find out more about it. Certainly, so thank you so much, you Dr. Wajda. Uh, stay with us. There's plenty more Central Valley today straight ahead. Stay with us. Thank you.